the streets are saying that the documentary was better than the right. massacre, which it is. And uh, 50 got jealous and mm. kicked me out of G on it. And he thought that he could do what he did to Ja Rule to me. Mm. But I'm the people's champ, man. Raps MVP, you can't get rid of me, man. So it'd be kind of hard to hide a 6'6 six, six guy, 215 pounds. 50's just a little guy. He's a little stocky, but I think, you know, I think I think I can take him, man. 50's a jealous little girl, man. Is that you know? what happened? Yeah, he's jealous, and somebody needs to braid his ponytail and put him back in his skirt. You see what I'm saying? To get the public to actually appreciate him, I had to do the records. Yeah. You know, and if you was in the studio with Dr. Dre, with his hit production for a year straight, why would you need three songs from me? to start your album. It's because even Dre felt like what he was doing wasn't good enough or up to standard until I actually offered those songs. Yeah. You know, like the, the songs that he, he did have were was music that I made with Dre, not with Gang Boys. How We Do, Hate It or Love It, Church for Thugs, Special, Higher, West Side Story. I mean, and I, I feel like I've said this so many times that it's like, I'm almost tired of explaining it to yeah. you. I'm gonna tell everybody in. I still don't fuck with 50 Cent. He a bitch. And it ain't, it ain't no cut with that. Next time we're in the same place, you get drunk. I don't fuck with that nigga, a sucker. I'm gonna say it in Houston. I'll say it in New York. I'll say it anywhere. That is a straight. One of the most notorious beefs in hip-hop history is 50 Cent and the game's beef. This beef started in 2005 and is still ongoing to this day. So today, we break down the entire history of 50 Cent versus the game. So let's get into it. In 2003, 50 Cent shook the entire industry with the release of his debut album, Get Rich or Die Trying, being the protege of Eminem. Dr. Dre saw 50 Cent's success and thought it was his time for him to bring up an artist of his own. In 2003, Dr. Dre discovered a kid handing out mixtapes throughout the city of Compton and decided to sign him to Aftermath. The world would get to know this rapper as The Game. Dre worked in the studio with The Game for several months, but it wouldn't be until August of 2003 that The Game and 50 Cent would link up in the studio studio. When on the June at Radio 3, taking it to the streets mixtape, 50 Cent, Lloyd Banks, and the newly signed rapper The Game made a track called So Hard. This was The Game's G-Unit debut on Wax. Brooklyn plan CeeLo call me NY game. Gucci Chuck Taylor, black diamonds in my chain. G G G you net. I write it on your vest, spray paint it on the wall like f y'all count this back. After several months of work trying to get some buzz going for the game, music executive Jimmy Iovine had an idea that would explode the game's career. Since 50 Cent was the hottest rapper in the world, Dre and Jimmy thought it would be a great idea if the game became an official member of G-Unit. So after Dre presented the idea to 50 Cent, the game was officially a part of the group. In January 2004, the G-Unit Radio 5 All Eyes on Us mixtape dropped, which featured the game on the cover and several features from him, so the world would now know the game as a member of G-Unit. All-Star game, no come outside, ain't drama, it's gonna be a homicide, low riding through the CPT, banks riding shotgun, buck in the backseat, uh -huh. G in the top song. I see you in the streets, I knock your ass out. And yeah, yo, home. In July of 2004, the game even got his own G-Unit Radio mixtape called The Fifth Element, as Dre was trying to gain steam for his West Coast artist. 50 Cent was working on his second studio album, The St. Valentine's Day Massacre, which was scheduled for a February 14th, 2005 release date. During this, the game was also working on his debut album, N-Words with an Attitude Volume 1, which was later changed to the documentary. But one day, during a recording session at his home studio, being the solid dude he was, 50 Cent decided to mute his vocals for several tracks off of his album that he was working on and give them to the game so his debut album could be hot. 
On September 7, 2004, the first single for Game's album, West Side Story, was released, which featured 50 Cent. The game was slowly gaining more and more buzz, so the two decided to drop another single on November 23, 2004, How We Do, was released, and this would be the song that gained the game major traction. Early 2005 rolled around, and this is where 50 Cent and the game's relationship would go sour. During this time, the game would begin dissing other artists and DJs for no reason. So 50 Cent had to cover for game, call these people to patch it up. This way they wouldn't end game's young career. Will we ever see game and 50 Cent work together again? I doubt that. I mean, strongly. I, um, I didn't do anything. I, I never really understood because I didn't, I didn't know what the motivation was for the, the game issue. You know, initially it was like a, a, just a decision on his part. I felt like because I I I went over it in my head a million times. On does like it why. feel like with game watching your behind the music also and saying you recorded these records, right. you did the vocal, you said no, I'll put this on there, like gave them like heaters. Yeah. Do, do, is it more betrayal than anything? Like, but yeah, but we I didn't have a long period of time around game. We worked for about five days. Oh wow. You know what I mean? And Dre spent a year in the studio with Game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So he had a chance to to be around him to kind of gauge what his character was. Right. You know, and when he was When did you realize what his character was? After his record was out. You see what I'm saying? Right after the record was out, it was like, you know, I'm hot. Because of how many records it sold at that point. Then were there he, times when you guys were on the road or you seen something when he was with G Unit that you was like, oh man. Never. Right. Never. There was never any... Like, he called me, actually. Because he had said something about Jay-Z. He said he could suck his, you know, and Memphis Bleak and Beanie Siegel. He did it overseas, and it came back mm -hmm. right away. And he had called me, and I was like, y'all, let me talk to him, you know, because it was so early that Jay could have kind of put his lights out. Right. You know what I mean? Like, your record just came out last week. Why did you say that? You know what I'm saying? It was really his first performance, like. Mm. You know, he went off and he, he he said these things, and then I was busy patching that. I was putting band-aids over stab wounds with in that situation, and then he came back, and his way of patching it up was, uh, I don't have a problem with Jay Z or or, or or Fat Joe or anybody. You know, like he said, I have a problem with anybody instead of the people that he directly had those issues with. Right. And 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 it was like. <clears throat> I'm busy patching this thing up that you just did, and you come back and you say you don't have a problem with, even with the people that I have issues with. Right. So you was that like strike one and two, or was that, it was, was that it was, strike? It was interesting, like, cause he was saying, cause they were talking to him discussing what I had put out on Piggy Bank, and he was like, "Yo, I ain't got nothing to do with that," and this, this, and that, and I'm like, "I just gave you your first three singles." More problems began rising when the game wanted his debut album, the documentary, to come out before 50 Cent's second studio album, which led to 50 delaying his album till March, which gave 50 a very bad taste in his mouth. On January 28th, 2005, Hate It or Love It dropped, and in the music video, 50 Cent actually refused to sit in the front seat of the lowrider with the game as tensions were rising between them. The breaking point in this beef is when the game would go on to say that he has no issues with Nas, Fat Joe, and Jada Kiss, which were all of 50's enemies at the time. This was the last straw for 50, as he saw this as disloyal. So during an interview with Ed Lover on Power 105.1, 50 Cent would go on a tangent about the game and officially would kick the game out of G-Unit live on the air. Hey, now, let's talk about the G-Unit for a minute, 50. Yeah. Now, I've read where you said game was about to be dropped from Aftermath Interscope before yeah. you got involved. That's true? Yes, it was absolutely the truth. How did that transpire? Uh, you know, the, creatively, the tires got stuck in the mud, you know, and, <laughs> you know what I mean? So we actually got together. I recorded six records on Game's new album. Right. I did West Side Story, How We Do, Hated to Love It, Church for Thugs, Special, and Higher. You see what I'm saying? And he came back recently from overseas and was disrespectful man like the, the way he's like it's like he's feeling himself like because of how well his record is selling mm -hmm. you know so I, I you know openly i wouldn't expose what i did for the project but i wrote those records i created the, the concept of those records and he rapped around it he's a great rapper he's not a good songwriter 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Which and is a, there's a difference. It's a major difference. You oh know? yeah. And he says a lot of people's names for shock value. He says things he doesn't mean. He says a lot of things and take it back. Uh-huh. He, he says, uh, you know, he had issues with Joe Buttons. Then he runs into him in a club and they're taking pictures. He had issues with uh, Memphis Bleak. Then he ran into Memphis Bleak in, My- in Miami. It was no problem. Uh huh. You know what I mean? See, he he. This is the truth. You know what I mean? The facts. This is the same facts that I talked about on Piggy Bank. See, I'm not a fake person. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. You see what I'm saying? And for me, it's, he has a lot of inconsistencies. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, it, It's incredible that he would come back and forget how much work, how much I've done for him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, personally. You know what I'm saying? I, I, so where does he stand as far as Junior is concerned right across now? Across the street or around the corner. He's not in my camp. Not at all? No way. Okay. Now, not after being that disrespectful. And at the same time, it's the same thing like, for for me, I, I love Dr. Dre. The right. Same way I love Eminem. Well, why did you and Game get into a shoving match? We ain't never been in never. a shoving match. No, See, that's, that's not true. That's what you say to sound good. Okay. That's what you say to look good. Me and 50, I push 50. Never. You see what I'm saying? That never happened. Eh? You know what I mean? And it's like, it's things that they say that are inconsistent. Like, I really don't understand what made them do that. Like, what, what, really, what's on your mind? Later that day, the game was in New York where he would sit down with Angie Martinez at Hot 97. Where do you find out that 50 Cent kicked him out the group? Who's this? It's Tone from Rockaway. What's up, baby? I just want to know what's up with game. What's up with him and 50? 50 talking real greasy, you know? What, what exactly? What do you say? Somebody asked the way game still with G unit. He said around the block. He said across the street around the block. He said, yo, he said hey, next album he ain't doing nothing for you. Man. You gonna sell like 500,000 copies. That's what he said? That's what he said. Wow. What you think about that, man? Yo, I, yeah, don't hurt this cat. Don't hurt this cat, man. This is the clown, man. I'm going to rock away Queens, man. Hey, yo, I'm a, yo, you know what I'm going to do, man? What you going to do, baby? I'm going to be easy and I'm going to make good music, homie. That's all, and that's you, all. And you know what else I'm going to do, big dog? What you going to do? I'm going to keep it 100% hood and still cross over. That's what's up, baby. All the time, from Rockaway Queens to Compton. That same day, 50 Cent sat down with Funkmaster Flex at Hot 97, where he would once again speak on the game being disloyal. But the game was actually still in New York. So the game got a bunch of gang members and pulled up to Hot 97, where him and 50 Cent's entourage would get into a shootout, resulting in one of Game's guys getting shot in the leg. During this, 50 Cent leapt out the building through the back door. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Enough's enough? Right now. It's Hot 97. Funk Flex. We focus. DJ, DJ, nobody, nobody, nobody. Flex, Flex, sorry about that. Hey, it's okay, fellas. Hey, it's all great. A couple of days later, 50 Cent in the game would make an appearance making a donation at the Boys Choir of Harlem and the Compton Unified School District music program, where the two of them would embrace and squash their beef, but this would be very short-lived. This truce lasted all the way up until Summer Jam in 2005, where the game notoriously dissed 50 Cent and the rest of G-Unit, where he would throw his G-Unit chain in the crowd, saying that he's officially out of the group. This is where the G-Unit campaign would officially begin. We're a set, we're yo. Who got, who got my chain? My own chain. I'm not affiliated, so y'all can have this motherfucker back, man. Yeah, you know me, Mr. Throw's chain in the crowd. Give me, give me the G in the chain. So you can see it's all thick. Now, 
50 cent. That's the that's the big that's 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 yay on the ground. That's 50 cent. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the G unit, man. Put his ass on the stage, man. He a rat. Now I'm playing my shit. I'm gonna bust through my lips. Man, man, man. 50 cent can stop. Just a couple of weeks later, Game dropped the You Know What It Is Volume 3 mixtape, which as you can tell by the cover was solely focused on dissing 50 Cent. This tape spawned the legendary 300 bars and running, which is just 15 minutes of the game completely ripping apart 50 and the rest of G-Unit. 50 would respond in August in the Piggy Bank music video when he had the game in the video as Mr. Potato Head. 50 Cent did an interview with Tim Westwood where he would speak on the situation with the game at Hot 97 and why they're actually beefing. Everyone really must be leaning into you about the game situation. Yeah, yeah. For me, you know what? The game situation was disappointing to me. You know, I put so much time and energy into that project. I worked hard on that project, man. I I, I recorded six records on that album. For him to uh, come back and appear to be unappreciative was incredible to me. I mean, was that the situation that you felt he didn't take one for the team? Nah, you know what it is? It's like... Every every situation that uh, that he's came like he had a a, a situation with Jay Z, mm. you know, oh. that when he had issues with Jay, and I got a phone call from him. He was in Amsterdam when he called me back in the states, and I told him I said, just sit tight, let me see exactly what it's about. You know, I'll get in contact with Jay and see how it, yeah. you know really what What's it is. Happening? And uh, before I could get back to him, he went on stage and told everybody off. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's not how. I'm not comfortable with that. That's not how I function yeah. with my crew. You know, they, yeah. they wait until I say make a move because ultimately everyone looks like mm. I'm responsible for their actions. So it's like if Banks pop off or Yayo pop off at somebody, you know that I, I they already said to me that they got a problem with this person and I was mm. like, yo, you know what, go ahead. What was the initial thing? What was the spark which lit the fire which called the fallout? People, the streets, the, the streets are saying that the documentary was better than the right. massacre which it is, and uh, 50 got jealous and mm. kicked me out of G-Unit. And he thought that he could do what he did to Ja Rule to me. Mm. But I'm the people's champ, man. Raps MVP, you can't get rid of me, man. Mm. So it'd be kind of hard to hide a 6'6 six, six guy, 215 pounds. 50's just a little guy. He's a little stocky, but I think, you know, I think I think I could take him, man. 50's a jealous little girl, man. Is that you know? what happens? Yeah, he's jealous, and somebody needs to braid his ponytail and put him back in his skirt because, I mean... He's obviously off his rocker, man. But uh, I dropped 300 bars. I know you heard it. Yeah, it's crazy. And uh, now G Unit is starting to fade away in the U.S. I, I really don't understand where the actual situation went bad at. You know. Mm. Mm. How suddenly you ended up where you ended up? Yeah, I mean it was crazy. Like it's like he came back from overseas and he wasn't even scheduled to be in New York City, and he went to radio and said things that, you know that made me feel like it was intentional, like he was trying to do that ahead of me releasing my record. You know, to mm. set a, a funny tone. So it was like, it was cool, I responded. 
You know, but I liked him enough to do as much as I did for his project. I wrote mm. six records again. And I, because I liked him that much, I feel like I can resolve the situation with him. With him. I didn't hate him. It's just one thing that he said one day that upset me mm. to the point that I, you know, responded. Yeah, but it's cool. We can talk about Hot 97 now, man. It's Westwood. What? What? Well, no, 97, this man. Like I, I, I heard somebody caught on it in the... Man, all I, I mean, man, it was like, you know, I went up there, 50 right. was talking about me on the radio. So you went up there to like, address it? Yo, what's happening? Yeah. And uh, so 50 and Lloyd Banks, Tony Yayo, they didn't want to come downstairs because right. they were scared. I had the whole Black, Black Wall Street with me and uh, they didn't want to come down, so they sent their police down. What happened at 197 was... You was up with Flex. Oh, yeah, I was on the radio, so I, right. I don't know what happened downstairs, you know what I mean? So, you exactly. know... Exactly. But, you know, shots got popped. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what they said. That's you know, what they were doing. I was All hiphop.com said. <laughs> and was it some record company too who copped it? Who, uh, what's who, that? Who copped it in the leg? Oh, no, no, no. I, <laughs> I guess it was from um, California. Okay. And that's what, uh, what I got from the newspaper. And the police came down. And uh, they came out and they were so intimidated that they pulled out guns and my guys start walking towards the doors and they start shooting at the ground and shots get it up, hit my man no. in, the, in, the, in the leg and shit, man, so. So the police were shook and just started letting off? Yeah, yeah, 50 security. But see, see, I have security, but you know what I'm saying? It's more or less crowd control. We don't want to mm -hmm. hurt anybody. We don't need police or anything. You know what I'm saying? Like that guy right there, that's just Tim from Compton. He's from Compton, that's my homie, man. He'll break you in half. And then it ain't no problem, though. He ain't the police or none of that. You know, we don't get down like that. Do it again, Tim. What'd you, what'd you do to him? Yeah, that's all he gave you. Yeah, right, yeah, right on. <laughs> see, see 50, 50 rolling with the, with the, with the yeah. bomb squad, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So He's going to move forward in his direction on his own. Yeah. Oh, and, you know, non, not G-Unit? Well, he has to create his own situation. I think it's okay. Black Wall Street, I think. Okay. He's trying to do He's going to create his own thing. That, that's what this is about, really. The game would then follow up with the Ghost Unit mixtape dedicated to dissing G-Unit. 50 Cent would finally respond to the game at the end of the song Emotional on the G-Unit Radio 14 Back to Business mixtape where he would throw shade towards the game. Now you know Jimmy you told me to do that. God can't say, she do not. You know? Well, Jimmy, why you don't tell him how he's gonna pay his bills now? I really don't like old school. The game wasn't going to let his foot off the pedal, so on December 3rd, 2005, the game dropped the Stop Snitch and Stop Lying mixtape, which included a DVD where the game literally made an entire documentary about dissing 50 Cent and G-Unit. This was undeniably hilarious and showed that the game can be creative when it comes to beef. And um, 50 came through, and uh, so I met dude, and um, you know, we chopped it up. And uh, he listened to the beat and said it was hard. And then he said, um, you know what I'm saying, he had a hook for it. So, you know, he went in the booth and he spit this, uh, spit this, it's so, you know, he spit the hook, the hook. It's so hard to say goodbye. And uh, the shit was crazy. So I was like, okay, dude, uh, you know, dude, dude, I fuck with dude. That was around the time that uh, In the Club had just dropped, you know what I'm saying? And, and the, a lot of people don't know, but In the Club was a Dr. Dre beat <clears throat> that was um, supposed to go to D12, you know what I'm saying? But D12, um, they shot it down and then it went to 50. About the same time, Rakim was on the label. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? And uh, E first came back and, and I had just got there. And uh, so 50 did in the club and it was a smash. But in the club was Dr. Dre's beat. You know what I'm saying? In the club was, was that was Dre, man. You know what I'm saying? Anybody, you could have you could have jumped on in the club and then you would have been, you know what I'm saying? You'd have been 50 Cent, man. You know what I'm saying? It was just that beat was so crazy, man. So this right here is a guy that actually yeah, liked 50, man. Yeah. Anyway, whatever about him. Well, man, he know what it is, man. He from East LA, man. Tell him what it is, man. It's about the game right here, G. Yeah. 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 See, we gonna convert him, man, by the end of this year. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
gonna die. See how he changed his mind? Yeah, man. What you say? The game is the best, man. The game is the man. He's a hustler, man. What about 50 cents? 50, die. He was a real, like, he was a real humble cat, you know what I'm saying? I almost want to say, like, like, not a threat. What's up, dude? You guys know where I can find 50 cents? <laughs> No, no, no. Not around here, huh? We got him before you did, man. All right, man. Let me know if you find him, man. Just hold him, and then I, and then come get me, and then, you know. The Games album, there's no comparison of the flows or the lyrics or the style. So, you know what I'm saying? We're like, what you helped me write, man? He ain't helped me write shit. And then he say he gave me all his hits. Well, why you ain't keeping for yourself? And why is the documentary a better a better album than The Massacre? Man, what the f What the f Hold up, man. Man. Lloyd Banks. Southside Jamaica neighbor. Fuck out of here, man. CD popping more than that, man. You know what I can find Yeah, you got a drink? Huh? Yeah, you got a Formula 50 one. In the store right there, in the market area. And they got the Formula 50 one? Oh, yeah. Okay, got everything you. in there. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. You ever taste it? Is it any good? It's great. Yeah, the problem yeah. Got a little grape taste to it. It's very good. Got a little grape taste to it. 50? Yeah. 50 cents? Yeah. I bought this CD on the 1st of September so that it will help you outsell F Tony Yayo's debut album. Please sign the album for me and send it back with the Ghost Rider mixtape. You must be a kid, man. Ghost Unit, my man. Uh, from your loyal UKG Unite fan, Ero, your number one fan. P.S. Jit, 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 G, U, not. You need to put 50 where he belongs on the top side of the quarter. F it, f it. Give him the curly head like motherfucking um, George Washington. This shit. You see that, man? That go the letter, man. You see, I like the. He was real creative. Ero, I like your manuscript, man. The whole jit, 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 jit. You not. That shit is hilarious, man. We gonna go through a couple of these, man. Ero had five, man, but Rolando got about seven of them shit. Jit, 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 G, you not. What's this right here? This ain't even a letter. This, somebody sent me this, and it say, um, 50 Cent is a home. No, I'm just kidding. This one is just a picture of Mr. Potato, the real Mr. Potato head right here, man. See, you got the big ass gap teeth. With the gap teeth, man. You remember that shit? Gap teeth in your mouth so my dicks got to fit. Yeah, that's that gangsta shit, man. Dre said that a long time ago, man. I was going up in Compton, man. I was like one of, I thought I was the number one NWA fan in the world. Still am, man. That's why I got tatted on my chest, man. But the game has just begun, man. This shit is funny right here, man. See this shit? The 50 Cent is the real Mr. Potato Head. Look at the teeth, though, man. Yeah. Perfect size for Lloyd Banks to fit in his mouth, cause you know they suck each other's all day, man. Just keep fucking with me, cause he want me to stick my dick in his mouth, but I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it, cause you a. F Let Lloyd Banks stick his dick in your mouth. Let Yayo stick his dick in your mouth. You stick your dick in Buck's mouth, since y'all off. I like. But I don't like 50 Cent finally had free time after a very busy year in 2005, so he finally dropped his first official diss track towards the game called I'm Not Rich, I'm Still a Lion on February 27th, 2006 on the June at Radio 17 Best in the Business mixtape where 50 would diss the game in the perspective of the game, which was actually really creative and hilarious. mic on. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you all for coming out tonight for the screening of my new film, I'm Not Rich, I'm Still Lying. It's 50 Cent starring his game, it's autobiographical. I hope you enjoy yourself. They be calling me crazy, I might be just maybe, I'm gangster, I'm crippin', I move to, I'm trip up 50, f**k Drake. W.A. Man, I'm Hurricane Kane. M. Listen, 
chain. I bought the West back. I write the best raps. But what about Snoop? Snoop shit ain't all that. Then I get bad bitches now. I even f Maya. I f the first game. 50, you a liar. See, that's why I hate you. You think you know me? I'ma tell everybody you shot my homie. I hope the police get you when you go to jail. The feds freeze your accounts and you can't make bail. I hope everybody on T unit go to hell. Put him on them OB stack or ND12. So what I was on change of heart. So what I was a stripper. So what I never bang. I'm from Compton. Oh! <laughs> this is too much fun, man. Hey! DVD. <laughs> Is that all you got? I mean, I mean, news flash. Nobody believes you. <laughs> Didn't you say you woke up out the coma 2001? Well, your brother says you never were in a coma. Didn't you say you were in a gang? Well, your brother says you were never in again. Now you can get your records together and you can submit them to me. I mean, you can send the records that you have to me so I can open your album budget, your recording budget. You gotta send the music to the boss. That's me, that's me, that's the boss. Yeah. That's it, that's all. I rule with iron fist. 50 Cent's movie, Get Rich or Die Tryin', actually lost in the box office to Chicken Little. So the game used this against 50, calling him Chicken Little. G-Unit's new West Coast artist, Spider Loke, dropped a mixtape in February of 2006 called Banga Doshish. And this mixtape was dedicated to dissing the game. Game got wind of this and dropped a diss track towards Spider Loke called 240 Bars Spider Joke. On April 10th, 2006, the G-Unit Radio 18 Rags to Riches mixtape was released. And this mixtape was, for the most part, Spider Loke dissing the game. 50 Cent would finally get involved in this beef after being quiet for some time, when on July 3rd, 2006, the G-Unit Radio 21 Hate It or Love It mixtape was released. And as you can tell by the cover, this mixtape was dedicated to dissing the game, as 50 Cent exposed the game for allegedly being a male stripper before being a rapper. Yeah, I woke up from the coma 2001. Yeah, hit it or love it. Yeah, I'm on top. I love it. Yeah, it's my summer. Go ahead, say something. I want you to say something so I can smack the black off you. I'm spit in your face. Come through there, man. I can't wait, man. Summertime, we gon' mash out this year. I got shoes. Oh my god. All he all he do is smother me. Or he cries like a baby. Oh. He, he cries like a baby. Uh, like a baby. If, well, he's if, what he's sensitive? What what girl doesn't want to be No, smothered. wait a minute, but you're too sensitive. Don't, don't you think that shows that he cares a lot about you or But I mean he shouldn't always do that. I mean he too always much. try to act extra macho and he's not. Man, I don't know what's wrong with that. What is he crying for, man? What's the matter? Let him Well, this is Southside, man. You know, yeah. It ain't gonna change. Nah. You know, it's gonna get worse before it get better. Shout Trust me. <laughs> The game responded a couple months later with the track called 100 Bars The Funeral. And on this song, he decided to take a lot of shots towards Lloyd Banks. Banks heard this, so when he was on BET's Rap City doing his freestyle, he decided to take shots at the game, calling him a G-Unit groupie. That boy ain't no Ice Cube and he ain't no Snoop. He ain't no Easy E and he ain't no Dre. He ain't no Pop. He ain't gon' pop. Just run away. All this out the blue. This is which side is the punk I should've knew. Cause he was a rider from jump. Yep. I'm one of the realest that did it. Anything you ever heard me on, I should've.
did it. I spread the flow to the masses and he bit it. Got a teardrop, a ghetto pass, and ran with it. I know a couple that a lot of fries hat. Put a butterfly blade on his butterfly tat. You know me, low key, rubber slide strap. Play with me if you wanna, if you want a hell of a summer. Game was a G on the groupie. If they made a flick about is he be in the movie? The game responded to this with a track called Sound Scan, where he would mock Lloyd Banks' first week sales, but he actually used his second week sales instead of his actual first week sales to make him look worse. In summer of 2006, the game dropped the lead single to his second album, Doctor's Advocate, with the track It's Okay. And on this track, he actually says that he has no beef with 50 Cent. I ain't got beef with 50, no beef with Jay. On December 18th, 2006, Lloyd Banks dropped his mixtape Mo Money in the Bank Part 5. And on the track Showtime, he goes directly at game. In 2007 is where this beef would take a complete turn for the worse. The game's manager at the time was Jimmy Henchman, and it was believed by 50 Cent himself that Jimmy was telling the game to go at 50 so he can be bigger than 50 Cent, and 50 thought Jimmy completely manipulated game. In mid-2007, Tony Ayo and G-Unit affiliate Lodi Mac were outside of Jimmy Henchman's New York City office when they spotted Jimmy's 14-year-old son outside of the building. They confronted his son and Tony Ayo allegedly slapped his son and Lodi Mac allegedly pulled a gun on him. This was all caught on camera, so eventually Yayo and Lodi Mac were arrested, but Tony Ayo got away with no jail time, while Lodi Mac took the rap and served two years in prison, and when Lodi Mac was released from prison, he was shot and killed. Jimmy Henchman allegedly was the one who put a hit for Lodi Mac to be killed, and according to Tony Ayo, the man who killed Lodi Mac was actually his cellmate in prison. Jimmy Henchman allegedly tried killing 50 Cent and Tony Ayo on multiple occasions. In 2007, when 50 Cent and Akon were filming the music video for his song I'll Still Kill, according to the paperwork, Henchman and his goons were allegedly supposed to come through and kill 50 Cent, but they backed out of the hit. Another occasion of Jimmy Henchman trying to kill 50 was when, according to the paperwork, while he was driving by 50 Cent's office, Jimmy Henchman allegedly pulled out his gun but didn't fire after spotting police behind him. Jimmy Henchman also found out that 50 Cent's SUV was bulletproof, so he allegedly attempted to blow up 50 Cent's SUV when he attempted to have a bomb placed underneath the car. Things would get really heated when Tony Ayo's life got threatened twice. Once, when Jimmy Henchman allegedly sent goons to shoot up his Bentley, but luckily for Yayo, he was inside the bulletproof truck that was parked behind the Bentley. The second attempt at Tony Ayo's life was when Jimmy allegedly sent goons to do a drive-by shooting on Tony Ayo's mother's home, where a bullet nearly hit a gas line in the house. Like, I, I lost my man, my man, rest in peace, my friend Lodi Mack, he got killed. Mm. Behind, you know, the smacking with Jimmy Henchman's son. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I, I, I'm off the record. I have money on my head. Everything is documented. I just don't talk about it because it's real street. Shit. My mom's crib got shot up with a silencer 22 times. You know, yeah, so when damn. it comes to this rap and beef, shit, like G Unit, it's not like being down with a Jay Z or a Kanye. We was down with 50. Mm. 50 had beef with Prem since the beginning. Beef with Tata. Beef with a lot of street niggas, and he never backed down. You know, mm. so. It's real moving around with him, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. a lot of real situations, man. Because yeah. your man did a year and then got killed when he came out. Yeah, the, yeah. the, hit, the actual hitman was, it's all documented. Mm. Like, you could look it up, so I don't want to seem like I'm dry snitching. It's like, if you read Jimmy Henchman's case, all this is documented. Mm. But the hitman was actually in jail with my friend. So he befriended him in jail. And then when he got home, that's the same hitman that was his friend in jail. It was the actual hitman. All the, and all the dudes that... that how fucked up is that? I mean, it just tells you, you know, so anybody will do anything for the money, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I had money on my head plenty of times. Like, when I was locked up on the island, I had money on my head. I had so-called money on my head in the street, you know what I'm saying? You know, 50 so-called had money on his head. Everybody is just a part of, you know, f with 50 Cent and, and, and being a part of G-Unit, you know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. You live and you learn. That's why when I see these rap beefs, I'm, I know how serious it can get. If you guys want an in-depth look into 50 Cent's beef with Jimmy Henchman, check out my video that I made about it. I'll leave the link in the description. After all the attempts at 50 Cent and Tony Ayo's life, 50 Cent found out where Jimmy Henchman's goons in Atlanta lived, so he left threatening phone calls and a dead rat at their front door warning them to stop.
Now, this beef with Henchman and the death of Lodi Mac is the reason why 50 Cent and the game's beef won't ever be resolved. Because 50 thinks this all started from the game. And if it wasn't for the beef with game, none of this would have happened and Lodi Mac would have been alive today. In 2008, Young Buck and 50 Cent started having beef with each other because Young Buck was allegedly bad mouthing and being disloyal to 50 Cent. Young Buck actually called 50 Cent to apologize, but being the devious troll he was, 50 Cent actually recorded the entire conversation conversation where Young Buck was crying on the phone and Buck was pleading to 50 saying that he was broke. 50 was smart. He knew Buck was going to backpedal this apology so he kept this recorded conversation and sure enough Buck was caught being disloyal again so 50 Cent actually released the entire recording to the internet. Yeah because you already showed me that. Remember when we talked about man, how game used to call talking about he didn't want no problems and all that shit. Yeah. And, and I wouldn't get on the phone with him but right after he said he didn't want no problems he did it again. That's that bullshit, bro. And he did it again, and he did it again. Like, and I was like, see, that's why I never... I'm not going, I ain't, I ain't, man, you know, I'm... This is 50 Dap. Nah, no, but you understand, that's why I don't, it's still not my, you know, Olive brand. I know, bro. That's the whole shit. It's just, it's just confused. After that, Young Buck was pretty much out of the group. So Buck and the game actually linked up to make a diss track on 50 Cent called Taped Conversation. I felt the itch. I knew the G Unit white beaters was tapped. I spoke to MOP, chopped it with Billy and Fame. We good. Real n don't play the silly game. I told Buck in 05, I could never stay loyal to a homo snitch. During an interview with 50, Banks, and Yayo, as they were getting ready to drop their second album, T.O.S., Lloyd Bank took shots at the game. The game would respond on a video calling out Banks, saying that he's nothing more than 50 Cent's puppet. This beef would go quiet, until in 2009 when 50 Cent and Rick Ross were beefing. Game was asked about it, and he said that he's actually on 50's side on this one. Um, he's gonna be in town February 27. Real quick, to a whole different kick as well. What'd you think about? The, I know people always go back to this with you making that. I mean, this is how it kind of originated. What'd you think about the Rick Ross uh, 50 Cent? What's your two cents on that? Hey, homie, I think it's a Rick Ross 50 Cent. Hey, for the first time in four years, man, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like low key riding with 50 on this. Man. <laughs> hey, for the first time in four years, only I'm siding with this dude, man. Hey, it's crazy. I don't know what's gonna become of it, but man, hey, yo, Ross, homie, call me on my phone, man. Hey, yo, call Eddie, you know, because it's going, I'm pretty sure it's going to hit you too. It's the first time I talked about this. But, yo, Rick Ross, man, reach out to my folks if you can't, man, find Eddie Francis up in, you know, Seattle, man. Call him and then have him call me on three-way, man, so I can get you out of this mess, man. It's just ridiculous. It's a problem. Mama shopping. She's trying on fur coats with the Stevie Wonder jam. Not the is it, she lovely. <laughs> the game did an interview in 2009 where he claimed that Michael Jackson actually tried ending the beat between him and 50 Cent. During this time, the game would apologize to 50 Cent and take it back multiple times, which is why 50 calls the game bipolar. Later that year, on November 9th, 2009, 50 Cent dropped his fourth studio album before I self-destruct, and on the tracks So Disrespectful and Strong Enough, he takes shots at the game. Come on, gang, you'll never be my equal. Your homies shoot guns, my niggas shoot people. It was five of us, all of us millionaires. That one's a f***ing junkie. That one's a f***ing Now it's three of us. That's the way we started. After that, in late 2009, the game set out to retire from making music. But during an interview, he was asked what he thought about 50 Cent's latest project. And game clowned 50 Cent's first week sales, saying that 50 is done. Let's talk about, uh... 50 Cent's new album and the sales. He sold about 160,000 the first week. I don't know what he sold, man. How much did he sell? 159,747. Damn. I should have bought three more, man. I tried to help him over that over that 160 mark, man. <laughs> we bought 17 albums, man. Real talk. You actually bought 17 copies of the four I just wanted to help him out, man. I tried to get him to, I don't know, maybe my 17 was going to get him to a million. I didn't know what I was doing. But, you know, I, hey, man, I support it. I support hip hop, man. Yeah. So. It's sad and tragic that he, you know, that he didn't do what he thought he was going to do. But, I mean, he's 50, man. He'll, he'll figure out a way to sell somebody some G-Unit Mac or something, man. Or G-Unit ones or, like, you know, G-Unit Ds. Like, he, you know, he's a businessman, man. So do you think the numbers are a sign of the times with the economy and the music industry? Or do you nope. Think I just I think that if Drake came out on the same day, he would have did a million or something, or he would have did his mark. I just think people are not buying what they don't want to buy, and they are buying what has the buzz and what's hot, man. So uh, I think I fall um, 
I think it's a thin line, man, and I fall somewhere in the middle, and uh, that's what keeps me afloat. And uh, my lo- my longevity is sustained, man. I'll be here for a while. You know, he sold like only a thousand more than Rick Ross did. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's dope, man. I'm gonna try to double both of them. In 2010, the game would once again apologize to 50 to try and make amends, but this time, a video surfaced of the game at a party where he actually screams G-Unit for the first time since 2005, and he also says that he would definitely reunite with G-Unit once again. Hey, what's going on, man? I mean, you did say some stuff later on, too. We saw on the internet talking about the picture and stuff, and like, you know, that whole situation. Right. What I, basically, what I was doing was that I was just letting the homie know that it's 2010, it's a new day, and it's really, it's really time to get money, you know what I'm saying? So, it's like, it's like having a machine, and then you just take, you ain't got to take the motor out there. I felt like I was the motor, he felt like he was the motor. Take a screw out of, out the machine, and all the shit gonna fall apart. You know what I'm saying? So every time, every now and then, you gotta put it back together sometimes. So all I was saying to Fifty was that why not get out here, bring it like you know, make Voltron and shit, yeah. bring it back full circle and get some off. Well, that's what everybody wanted to have it anyway. So what I was saying was I wasn't opposed to it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ain't nobody. He, you know, he, he got an ego. I got an ego. Ain't nobody apologizing. Right. Ain't nobody saying that they was wrong. But you don't got to do that yeah. to make amends. To understand it. You just got to get together, do it. And you can do it for the sake of money. Nigga don't never got to. We don't got to <laughs> break no. We don't got to break no peanut butter and jelly sandwich yeah. and have to do this shit. Come to an agreement, this man. Get the shit done like that. And you know the first single gonna be played on Power 92. Whenever it's done, game man's always a play. Yeah, and you know, you know, since you my right here, and you know we out in Cali, it's feeling good. Oh, Man, 50 would not respond to this at all, and this beef seemingly went quiet once again, until in September 2011, 50 dropped a track called Love Hate Love, and on this track, he takes shots at the game, saying that game was ungrateful, even after 50 wrote his biggest hit songs. 50 Cent also referenced the Hot 97 shooting from 2005 that sparked his beef with the game in the first place. You said you was gonna see me when your homie got shot It's been a while so I'm guessing you must have forgot Once again you forget, ain't this some shit You forgot about me, I wrote your hits You know how we do, hate it or love it, I'm special That's why you ass say my verse Just over a year later, on November 26, 2012, 50 Cent dropped a track called My Life. And on this track, he took shots at Young Buck and the game. 50 would clarify the diss towards game, saying that he wrote the song years before its actual release. A couple months later, in January of 2013, the game would hit a new low in desperation when he actually started a petition online to reunite G-Unit, in which 50 Cent would once again not respond. So the game got mad that he couldn't get a response out of 50. So on his mixtape, OKE, on the track Hollywood, he took shots at 50, retracting his G-Unit reunion and his apology. In 2013, G-Unit actually got back together for a reunion and would drop a couple of projects over the course of the next year. Of course, Game was not included in this reunion, but during an interview with Power 106, he was asked about what he thought of the reunion. Game said that he's actually happy to see G-Unit reunite. Why? Game is in the neighborhood, man. Now, Game, I got to ask you about this, man. I heard a, um just a quick comment when somebody asked you about G-Unit. Yeah. Now, G-Unit, as far as Banks, 50, Young Buck, Yayo, they're back together. Yeah. They've been putting out a lot of music, man. Where's your head with uh with G-Unit when they talk about, like, reunion, so on and so forth? And I heard you, like, they asked you a question, and it, and it wasn't, like, something where I was like, oh, Game on their head right now. Yeah. You know what it is, man? I saw um I saw the picture on Instagram of, um you know, all of them, Banks, Yayo, 50, and Buck. And uh, I thought that was cool of mm-hmm. 50 because at this point, you know, he, he got the new series Power, too, which I didn't even know that was his right. series. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, watching yeah. it. And then uh, after I seen, you know, 50, you know, on the credits, I was like, 
I don't know if I should t vote this. <laughs> you know, I don't know how I feel, but I already was embedded in the show. Supported or not. Is he, is right. hey, but I like the show. It's a good show. So you know what, man? I just kept watching it. You know, That's and every dope. time they show 50 name, at the end I blink. And yeah. then I get back to it. And then it's it. gone. You know, but nah, man. I, I saw the picture, and I really instantly thought that that was cool of him with all the money he got because he don't need, you know, music no more right. to give Banks, Yayo, and definitely Buck because that's my, that's my partner right. a chance to go back out there and do shows and mm-hmm. make right. money because G-Unit, you know, the name will pull in, you know, you know, will pack a building. Right, right, right. So, uh, you know, they get to split that up and I thought that was cool. That was my first and only thought about it. Oh, that's it. So you weren't thinking if, I, if somebody got on the phone like, I got a verse. No, nah, I don't got to right, do right, that. Right, right, at right, this right. point in my career, man, yeah, I, I think you. that uh, when G Unit was at its at its strongest point, man, I was a member of it, and we did what we did, and mm-hmm. then I think that uh, we moved on from that, and they doing their thing, and I'm I'm good, right? You know, this beef will go quiet until in 2016, a photo surfaced of the game and Lloyd Banks hanging out together at a club in Dubai. So 50 Cent took to Instagram to repost the picture with the caption, "What do you see when you look at this picture?" I see confusion. I'm not sure if it's just me. I'm a cancer. Shit don't get old with me. I never ask for trouble, but I really don't have a problem with it. I'm different. The question isn't how I feel about it, but how does Lodi Mac feel about it? Some shit is just better left alone. This goes back to my point earlier, saying that 50 Cent can never make amends to the game due to the death of Lodi Mac, which 50 feels all started from his beef with the game. The game would respond to this post on Instagram with the post of his own saying, in response to 50, when I heard Banks was in Dubai, I told my homies we're going through the holla. My team thought I was on some BS and thought we was going through to kick off some BS. I then told them, nah, we ain't on that. We on the other side of the world enjoying ourselves. Half y'all ain't even left LA. So we are gonna go through, show Banks party love, and I'm gonna personally let him know that me and him are 100. It's been 11 years since I seen Banks, and the funny thing is, I told myself when I got there, I was gonna go off his energy. And when we seen each other, it was instantly all good energy. So we chopped it up, threw back a few drinks, and took a flick for old time's sake to kill the negativity and tension that had once tore one of the greatest rap groups ever apart. At some point, you gotta be a man about certain situations. So last night, that's what I decided to do. It was my decision, whether Buck gonna admit it or not. I talk to that dude all the time, as recent as a few months ago when I was in Nashville and it was all love. Don't front now, my guy. This is me. As far as me and you, 50, our past has proven we both can get on some gangster sh- if need be. Being that lives have been lost on both sides. Lives have been taken from friends and fathers from kids, which could have easily been my life or yours. If you choose to ignore the grown man approach and continue to harbor hate for me and my side, that's your decision. I can't speak for Banks, but my pride was swallowed last night along with the shot of Hennessy in that club. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. I said my piece. Hashtag hate it or love it. 50 would have responded to this, but just a month later in March of 2016, the game and 50 Cent were actually in the same exact club in LA, and they even shook each other's hand. This is the first time they've been in the same building since 2005, so it was crazy seeing this. Game even posted a photo of all the bottles of F and vodka he bought, which was the brand 50 was endorsing at the time. Just a couple months later, in August of that year, the Game and 50 Cent would once again be present in the same club, but this time, Game got on stage to say some words, and he says that he's actually cool with 50 while 50 was there, and afterwards, him and 50 embraced once again. I feel no certain way. I f- with 50. What happened? That was 12 years ago. The beef would go quiet once again, but in July of 2018, the game once again ran into 50 Cent, this time at NBA player James Harden's day party, where they would once again shake hands and exchange some words. Fast forward to late 2020, the game called out 50 Cent to a versus battle, but this obviously never ended up happening. Two years later, in 2022, is where the beef would reignite fully once again, after Eminem, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Kendrick Lamar, Mary J. Blige, and Sapphire prize guest 50 Cent all performed at the Super Bowl halftime show. The game was upset that he wasn't invited to perform, so he would go on several interviews saying how he deserved to be in that spot. Around this time, the game would also begin beefing with Eminem to try and get his attention, but of course, Eminem actually never directly responded to the game. In March of 2022, a video surfaced of the game at a Lakers game running into Jimmy Iovine. 
and Jimmy completely ignored the game. So 50 decided to repost the video on Instagram with the caption, LOL, man didn't even look at him. Get this guy out of here. 50 wrote the records, LMFAO. Game saw this and commented on the photo saying, I ain't even see Mr. Burns. And if you wrote my records, write you one today and put it out. Your rap career died with them lollipop strap tank tops. You were actor, and that's why you ran to TV. Give us season two of that Tommy BS and leave this rap shit to people who can spell correctly and actually got bars, goofy N-word. The game would then post a picture of 50 Cent from the Super Bowl with his body photoshopped onto a rotisserie chicken with the caption, Stop running from this versus. Oh, and tell your girl stay out of my DMs if she don't want her man overweight, fat as f hanging upside down like rotisserie chicken at the Super Bowl. 50 Cent would clap back when he posted a picture of the game and wrote, no caption needed. Game would respond to this when he posted an alleged DM of 50 Cent's girlfriend, Cuban Link, DMing him. Game then posted a picture of 50 Cent and wrote, no caption needed as well. Throughout the year of 2022, the game was teasing a diss track on Eminem called The Black Slim Shady during his promo run for his 11th studio album, Drillmatic. Game would send shade to Eminem Eminem, 50 Cent, and even Dr. Dre to get attention for his album. So during that summer, 50 Cent actually leaked some of the reference tracks to some of the songs that he wrote from Game's debut album, The Documentary. On August 12th, 2022, the game dropped his 11th studio album, Drillmatic, and it went on to sell 18,000 copies within its first week. The game would then go on to claim that he wrote 50 Cent's song, What Up Gangsta? And of course, 50 Cent got wind of this, so during an interview with The Breakfast Club, he addressed this saying that the game is desperate for attention. So you wrote higher. The game yeah. higher. Okay. Yeah. Um. You wrote six songs out there. I'm higher. Uh, so you, this is how we like, do. I'm automatically thinking. Hey, this love is love how it. we do. But his verse was on that. So when you see the right credits, you think it's his verse. Yeah. Well, hey, love it. You see the right hey, credits, love you think it. it's his verse. Yeah. What else? What they, they, they sell kind of stuff about like he said he wrote "What Up Gangsta." What up, gangsta? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm like, come on, bro. He wasn't even around when we did that. Like that was before we, you even came into the picture. Like that's your bitch died right? Mm -hmm. He he didn't even come into after that. Yeah, we didn't right. even know who he was to after. But there's a. I know, there's a point where you, desperation where you say anything. 50 Cent got an Emmy for his performance at the 2022 Super Bowl, so he took to Twitter to throw shade at the game, clowning his first week sales, saying, oh no, I'm sorry you didn't get one. Then the first week, 18K. If you need someone to talk to, I'm here for you, LOL. Game, of course, saw this, and while he was performing, he took the time to diss 50 Cent, saying that next time he sees him, a fight will break out. Hey, I'm gonna tell everybody in. I still don't f with 50 Cent, he a bitch. And it ain't, it ain't no cut with that bitch. Next time we're in the same place, shit get thrown. I don't f with that bitch, he a sucker, nigga. I'm gonna say it in Houston, I'll say it in New York, I'll say it anywhere, nigga. That nigga's a straight bitch. And I like the TV show, and I put that on the internet. Play my shit. Let's go. And I'm a gangster first, nigga. 50 Cent reposted this video to Twitter and wrote, Oh no, you making me nervous. Now you know it's not safe around me when I'm nervous, lol. Fast forward to January 18th, 2023, on the 18th anniversary of the game's debut album, The Documentary. Game made an Instagram post celebrating, but in this post, he actually gives credit to 50 Cent for helping him make the album. After that, nothing happened, but as you can tell, this beef will never be resolved. Even if 50 and Game run into each other at the club, they'll never be friends due to how personal this beef got. Especially the fact that 50 Cent lost one of his close friends over this beef. Me personally, I would love to see these two reunite and perform their classic songs once again. It's no secret that these two make magic together, but the game has proven himself disloyal to 50 Cent, so I don't see these two ever coinciding ever again.